passion. I'm Pastor Robin Reeves Kaltz here at St. George's Episcopal Church, also known as the Hope Church. And so we welcome you this morning and invite you to join along. Our service can be found on our website, which is www.stgeorgestc.org, where you can follow along in your Book of Common Prayer or just follow along in your heart and join us. We're blessed with some special songs today about compassion and also, of course, one to celebrate our nation and our independence. And so happy 4th of July, one day late to you. So we'll go ahead and get started and just uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Testament reading comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 24. The servant said to Laban, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has greatly blessed my master and he has become wealthy. He has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. And Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master when she was old. And he has given him all that he has. My master made me swear, you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I live, but you shall go to my father's house, to my kindred, and get a wife for my son. I came to the spring and said, 
O Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will only make me successful the way I'm going. I am standing here by the spring of water. Let the young woman who comes to draw to whom I shall say, please give me a, <coughs> a little water from your jar to drink. And who will say to me, drink, and I will draw for your camels also. Let her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I finished speaking in my heart, there was Rebecca coming out with her water jar on her shoulder. And she went down to the spring and drew. I said to her, please let me drink. She quickly let down her jar from her shoulder and said, drink, and I will also water your camels. So I drank and she also watered the camels. Then I asked her, whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, the whore's son, whom my cow bore to him. So I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms. Then I bowed my head and worshiped the Lord and blessed the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me by the right way to obtain the daughter of my master's kinsman for his son. Now then, if you will deal loyalty and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me so that I may turn either to the right hand or to the left. And they called Rebekah and said to her, will you go with this man? She said, I will. So they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse along with Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of my reds. May you, offspring, gain possession of the gates of their foes. Then Rebekah and her maids rose up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. Thus the servant took Rebekah and went his way. Now Isaac had come from Beer Roy and was settled in Negev. Isaac went out in the evening to walk in the field and looking up he saw camels coming and Rebekah looked up and when she saw Isaac she slipped quickly from the camel and said to the servant who is the man over there walking in the field to meet us the servant said it is my master so she took her veil and covered herself and when the servant told Isaac all the things he had done then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. So Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 45, verses 11 to 18. Join me in reading by half verse. Hear, O daughter, and consider, and listen closely. Forget your people and your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master, therefore do him honor. The people of Tyre are here with a gift. The rich among the people seek your favor. All glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gown is clothed with gold. In embroidered apparel she is brought to the king. After her, the bridesmaids follow in procession. With joy and gladness they are brought. And enter into the palace of the king. In the place of fathers, O king, ye shall have sons. You shall make them princes over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore nations will praise you forever and ever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus said, There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided up his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, 
a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But he came to himself and said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with great compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on, and he replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got himself back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so I might celebrate with my friends. But when the son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all this is mine, is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because your brother, this brother of yours, was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It's great to see you here today, to come together in fellowship, even if it is through virtual fellowship. As I mentioned earlier, today is the first day in which we are beginning five weeks of exploring compassion in the scriptures. I'm imagining that we could all stand a bit of compassion in our lives right now, as there is so much loss and suffering happening. Loss of what was normal, loss of a sense of certainty, loss of physical contact with family and friends, loss of celebrations, loss of even family members, unfortunately for some, loss of a sense of safety, and even loss of gathering publicly to celebrate something like Fourth of July. The good news is, and we hear in 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 through 4, it tells us that there is one who cares about what we are feeling and experiencing. He is the God, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received. 
from God above. Isn't it a comfort to know that we are not alone in what we are going through right now? That in spite of what it may feel like, God is with us and he cares for us down to the number of hair on our head. When we listen to stories, we can so learn so much from the feelings of the people. This is one way that we learn about the father's compassion for his son in our gospel story today. In fact, we see, listen, and recognize what people are feeling. And this helps us to in turn feel their joy or even their hurt with them. Sometimes it requires a bit of imagination on our part because the story itself may not tell us directly what people are feeling, but we can get the gist of it. For example, we might focus on the younger brother and father in the story, but the older brother has something to show us as well. Compassion helps us to see how every human being is important, loved, by God. So we've heard this story about a family party where everyone was celebrating around a meal, a fatted calf. But one of those members wasn't too happy about that party. As we focus in on compassion, it requires that we look at emotions. In our gospel story, it's full of emotions today. Fact, do you know that some expressions of emotion are actually contagious? Oh, like when someone yawns. Oh, have you caught my yawn yet? Now don't go to sleep. I have more to tell you. But the same is true with laughing and smiling frowning and crying, and even anger as fear, and fear as we have seen across our country, how very contagious emotions can be. But the interesting thing is we can offer compassion to others as we have been offered compassion by God. When you see someone yawn or laugh or cry, something in your brain responds because you know what it feels like to laugh, to be sad, or even to be sleepy. This is in fact called empathy. And we, when we know what it is to feel something that others are feeling, we can become more compassionate towards one another. For example, if you see me stub my toe, you feel compassion for me because you know it hurts. You might first have empathy and go, ow, oh, because you remember a time in which you stubbed your toe. But then, in fact, if you are moved strongly enough, you might offer to help me sit down and that is an act of compassion. That is what compassion is. When you see my hurt and you feel my hurt with me, empathy, and then you're moved to help ease my hurt. I would say first by just simply acknowledging it. I see you're hurting. It may require action, but in order to show empathy, we need to see each other, truly see. For really seeing each other is the beginning of compassion. I would add that it involves suspending judgments and rationalizing. It's just seeing each other as human beings first and foremost. I have a friend who I was in seminary with who was instructed by his bishop to invite the neighbors that were most dangerous to them to dinner around a table, just as Jesus would invite his enemies to have a meal with and even later his disciples. 
And the point of doing this was that something happens around a table. When we look into each other's eyes and hear each other's voices, we begin to understand what we have in common, how we are feeling. In this instance, my friend had invited a radical insurgent who had a Scud missile who lived next door. And as they both had their children playing together and they talked about what they wanted for their children and their hopes and dreams for their families and the generations to come, they realized they had more in common than they had separate. Do you know by the end of that meal, they both had gained understanding of one another. So much so that that gentleman with the Scud missile said, you're not who I thought I was fighting. I can't do this anymore. That's the power of coming to table, whether it is our welcoming others to our personal table at the kitchen or to the Lord's table of communion or our lunch table at school or even this digital online table, if you will. When we welcome people that are different from us, we're able to show more empathy. We're able to then show compassion. Our opening song today focused on how God invites everyone to the table, the table of blessing. Everyone is included at God's table. So I invite you to think about who is it that you would like to include at God's table. For the beauty is, is that God welcomes all to his table and we have all come to his table as family, not blood relatives, but spirit relatives. So as we see and welcome one another, we come to accept each other. When we gather together at the table, we also act as God acted in accepting one another. It takes intention and practice, recognizing and sharing feelings of others as well as connecting with our own bodies and emotions. We're so quick to run past them. Through the parable of this father and his two sons, we witness how compassion empowers us to release any anger and judgment we may hold toward others and ourselves and the world for being, for not being what we wanted or needed. We learn how compassion inspires seeing, forgiveness, and welcoming. I invite you to listen in on what are the emotions of that parable. The man had two sons. The younger brother greedily demands his inheritance, turned his back on his family, and left them for a faraway country. He wasted all the money that he took from his family. Soon he became needy and hungry. Even though he felt ashamed, he decided to return home, hoping his father might welcome him back. When his father saw him, he was filled with compassion. He ran out to his son and threw open his arms and gathered him in. He was so happy that he was alive, not dead, as he thought. So the father got a dinner together with the best of food and gave thanks, for this son was now safe, was alive. The older brother coming in from the fields, tired from a hard day at work, heard the music and dancing and became very angry and refused to go in. When the father went to the older brother to persuade him to come in, he said, I've listened to you and worked hard for you all these years and you've never given me a party. But my brother comes back after wasting all his money and you throw him a huge party? The father said to him, son, I love you. You know what is mine is yours. But people matter more than possessions. 
We thought we lost your brother from our family, but he's now home. Come to the table and celebrate with us. I can't help but wonder what did the father see in the son's return? What do you imagine the youngest son was feeling upon the return that the father felt too? Did you see what the father saw? Did it move you to compassion? I wonder, have you ever lost someone thinking they maybe were dead only to get them back? What joy. How about that older brother? What did you see in him? What emotions were coloring his sight? What feelings did you feel when you heard the story? Sadness? Shame for that younger brother? Anger? Shock? Disappointment? Surprise? There's a myriad of possible emotions. But in this story, who is it that shows compassion? And who receives compassion? I wonder if the older brother ever came to the party. I wonder what he would have had to let go of in order to do so. Maybe his anger and resentment and jealousy to lay those down. Maybe even his focus on things over people. I wonder who he would have sat with at the party if he was able to let go of those emotions and forgive his brother and father. Do you think he sat at the table with his dad and brother? If not, when would they have had another meal with each other? Who is it that sits with you at your dinner table? And what do you talk about? How do you welcome each other when someone's had a hard day and doesn't want to sit at the table? These are all opportunities for compassion is seeing and welcoming. I invite you this week to dare to try and see with the eyes of compassion those you encounter along the way those who are at your table each day. In fact, you might consider joining me in a little project, employing active imagination, and even imagine seeing Jesus in a chair at your table. Consider telling him about your day over a meal. Or in fact, you might be surprised what you hear and feel. Or you could call a friend and say, hey, can we have dinner over the phone together? For I know many of you are staying alone for your own safety. This compassion and action is meant to remind us of how we can be with one another so that in everything we make, do, or say, we feel Emmanuel, God with us. For in these silly, small, simple, tangible acts is an expression of the deep, wide compassion of God. I invite you to just see how it is that God is drawing us all together at this table of blessing. For the reality is, is that compassion helps us to see how every be human being is important and loved by God. So before we move on to the rest of the service, I have a prayer I'd like to pray. Welcoming one, you warm, your warm, wide arms are always open, drawing us into your heart full of love. Thank you for forgiving us in your mercy. 
Now may you make our arms your arms, helping us see and welcome with compassion all those we meet. Amen. Prayer in the face of a pandemic of living. Join me in this. Healing, sustaining, restoring, and compassionate God, whose grace is greater than frightening viruses and frustrating vulnerability, and even the virus of racism and division. Breathe new life into our hurting world and our daunting journey. Remind us of the trustworthiness of your promise that you will never leave us or forsake us. That our fear is not our governor, that our frailty does not have the final word to speak, and that our suffering is never the end of our journey. We hurt with the crisis of this coronavirus, those hurting from racial justice and division across our land. We pray for those who are broken in this pandemic. We remember those who are afflicted with the virus. Bring to these hurting souls a healing that restores, a strength that sustains, and a joy so durable that nothing can diminish it. We remember medical professionals on whom our lives depend, who are placing themselves in harm's way daily to provide aid to afflicted patients. Equip them with strength beyond their strength, courage beyond their courage, and a fresh awareness of how deeply their work matters. We remember the most vulnerable in our midst, the homebound, the nursing homebound, and hospitalized, those whose vitality belies their years, those whose financial vulnerability inspires anguish, those whose addiction cries out for a journey of recovery, those whose depression generates a crippling sense of isolation. Come, Lord Jesus, come as a companion, encourager, and deliverer in every circumstance where people feel alone, isolated, marginalized, and desperate. We remember those whose employment is severely impacted by bans, mandates, and restrictions. Come, Holy Spirit, bring unexpected provision, unanticipated contingency, and unforeseen blessing. We remember families that must both accommodate new re realities and adjust to unplanned rhythms. Come, Herod and God, and initiate within our families a compassion for all, and energize patience, an expanded playfulness, and an elevated pension for love. We remember your church taking out its normal patterns and practices. Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, awaken in your church a vision for what it means to connect in the midst of disconnection, to engage in the midst of disengagement, to bless in a season of reoriented blessing. We remember those who are cynical about this crisis and those who feel secure and unthreatened Crucified, resurrected Christ, humble in our arrogance, disrupt us in our artificial sense of safety, and transform our cynicism into an eagerness to stand alongside those who are hurting. Let your love be our breathing. Let your compassion be our heartbeat. Let your mind become our mind. Let your way be our way. Your truth, our truth. Your life, our life. Most of all, heartbroken, weeping, and resurrecting God, remind us that you are not watching our struggle from a distance. Speak to us afresh the truth that you are with us, allowing your tears to commingle with ours, allowing your heart to break with ours, allowing your infinite grace to redeem our suffering, our sickness, and our sorrow. In this time of suffering where the cross looms large, Usher us into the kingdoms of resurrection so that we might engage in the stewardship of life amid the trappings of death. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, life-steering spirit. Come, universe-creating, circumstance-transforming God. Come and bring wholeness in our brokenness, hope in our despair, healing in our hurting, 
life and our death. Reform our hearts, O God. Redirect our way. On the canvas of our journey, display the colors of your grace. Rework our desires, O God. Recreate our will. Like a poet come and rewrite our song, that we might sing for you. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And the blessing of God. And may the peace of Christ, which surpasses all understanding, be upon you now and remain with you this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we'll enjoy a, a hymn 719 if you happen to have your hymnal it's oh beautiful of spacious skies very fitting for this weekend it's on page 719 in your hymnal
Thank you for joining us today for worship and prayer. It is a blessing to have you with us in our midst. And if this has blessed you in any way and you would like to know more about St. George's community, we would love to share with you. You can contact us at hope at stgeorges.org. Likewise, if this has been a blessing to you and you'd like to donate, uh, you can go to the same website, stgeorgestc.org under contact us and there is a give button there we appreciate any donations as we continue to help those in need in our community as we go through this we're in this together and we will get through so keep holding out hope and the good news of jesus christ wherever you are